Easter Sunday was a month ago already. Wow. <laughs> and the other, it's Mother's Day. Once we got about Mother's Day, we came to that by mom. She was quite upset. But, you know, as we pray this Mass, we're praying for all moms, both living and deceased, for all mothers, stepmothers, those who are godmothers, and those who are loving, heart and devoted to others. <coughs> we pray for them on this beautiful, beautiful fifth Sunday of Easter. Join me as we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, peace, and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. We gather us today as the Lord's blessing upon us and all of others for God's grace and God's peace. We ask now for the forgiveness of our sin. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary, Lord have mercy. The Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have a gracious love for us. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are always and ever our <coughs> Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Mighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Preacher God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy, have mercy on us, to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will, you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, constantly encompasses the Paschal mystery within us that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care be a much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continue to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom who we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with space, with faith in the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, 
Porcherus, Nicanos, Timons, Parmias, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased daily. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the word, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ten string lyre chant his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him a living stone rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stone, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Christ. For it says in the scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone the builder rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the priests of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The risen Lord be with you. And our reading is from the Holy Gospel according to John. With you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God and faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you also know my Father. For now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not, not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ. Again, happy Mother's Day to all mothers. God bless them all for the love and care and sacrifice they've given us. And remember, in a few short weeks, May 30 and 31st, the last weekend of May, we will have Sunday Mass. It will be a different schedule, stay tuned for that, but it will be limited seating only, all right? Because we have to be every other pew in that distance from each other, so I think we're looking at like 80 people per service, but more details as we get closer and closer. A couple left their front door open in their home and their pet dog snuck and got out. Husband went out looking, whistling, calling for his dog, but no luck to no avail. So he got in his car and driving up the neighborhood looking, searching frantically for his dog. And finally saw a couple walking down the sidewalk. He pulled up and he stopped. He said, excuse me, have you seen my dog? And he said, you mean the one that's following your car? Yep, that was his dog. Hmm? He missed the obvious. And so in today's gospel, Philip is like that same fella. Show us the Father, and the word, show us God. And Jesus said, what? Did you not notice? He's, you see me, you see the Father, I'm with you all this whole time. But you're blind. You know, in choosing this gospel, and I mean, the sermon for this gospel, there's a lot to talk about. I couldn't speak about the first few words, right? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and faith in me. Oh boy, we say a lot about that, especially during these pandemic days. Or the whew, words that cause a lot of commotion. When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one can see the Father except through me. That's challenging. 
But what struck me was the words, but Philip. Hmm? He said, Jesus, show us the Father, and that'll be enough for me. Wow. He wants the beatific vision. We'll see God face to face. You know, I, and I like to talk about that because that's what people say today, not just during this virus, but more so. But because now people want to know, well, show us God. Where's God? Prove it. Hmm? As if science and God are both battling that they can't coexist. Everybody asks the same question. I want to see God. Prove it. Show me. Show me there's a God. Now, if you're waiting to see uh, something stupendous, miraculous, you'd be waiting for a long time. But we can see God because he is with us. When I was in college, whew, back in the 70s there, late 70s, um, during the Easter break, if I caught up in my studies, I would volunteer to help one of our parishes in New York City. The college is in New Jersey, so I would go down for that week. And I went, not because I was so apostolically minded, but because that was the only way to get off the seminary grounds. And plus, my family was just a subway ride away, so I got to see my family as well. So we were there, and they had like a youth center, keep the kids busy. And I remember that one afternoon, there in the schoolyard, right in the basketball court, one of our teens, John, asked me the same thing, sort of what Philip said to Jesus. Even though he went to a Catholic grade school, and I think he was in a Catholic high school, his faith was also shaky. So where's God? I want to see God. Show me God. Hmm? Show me the Father, and that would be enough. Well... I couldn't show many miracles, but I said, you know, I thought to myself, man, you're like that fellow looking for his dog, you're blind. Because I thought of Father Mancini. Father Mancini was a priest there in the parish. I didn't know who he was until I worked there. That was my introduction to Father Mancini. He was uh, from the old country, from Italy. Though he spoke English quite well, he still had that little Italian sound to it when he spoke. And he was sort of short, stocky, you know. Oh, but he was a dedicated, hard-working, committed priest. I believe when I was there, I think he was in this, like I said, in his, not a young man in his 70s, but still going strong. He was in charge of the bingo, which they had to raise money for the grade school. He, would, uh, he was in charge of visiting the sick. And I remember, especially on first Fridays, he came down, he was all dressed up, Father Mancini, nice clean pants, a suit jacket clean black shirt, but then he had his little black derby on, you know. Oh, he looked cool. And he spent the whole day visiting the sick. Now, this is New York City, so you're not driving around from home to home. You're walking the city streets, climbing up the tenement stairs, go up to different apartments, visiting the sick. I was so dedicated and committed. But really, Greg, my intention was on Thursday nights, he opened the gym for the neighborhood kids. They didn't have to belong to the parish. Whoever showed up was more than welcome to come in. And you know, I remember watching him, just watching him operating this guy, this, this old Italian priest in his 70s, taking these kids into the gym. The gym was downstairs, a small little gym, like a little box. But anyway, when the kids come, he would be at the door. He would greet them, and they would greet him as well. And I tell you, some of the kids that showed up, they were some rough-looking characters, man. Made me nervous. But they were respectful. Anyway, they go down and be playing basketball. And then about midway, he would uh, clap his hands. All right, all right. Come on, sit down. And they knew what to do. They stopped playing. They all gathered, sitting on those bleachers. They'd be sitting there hunched over, sweat dripping off them. And then he would teach these kids, probably never set foot in church, some of them. I am sure of that. Probably set foot in jail, but not about church. And there they were. And he started with the most basics, teaching the prayers, how to make the sign of the cross. These are some of the 18, 19, 20-year-old kids. Taught him the Our Father, taught him the Hail Mary. And depending on what the gospel was, he would give a little, little talk, a little homily. Now, I have to admit, he wasn't the most exciting, the most entertaining. There was no gimmicks to him, all right? But I have to say, they all sat quietly. All were respectful. Whether they liked or not, they were going to listen. And so they did. And I always admired him for that. I said, what a guy, what a priest, huh? Teaching the faith simple, in his own simple way. 
And I know they respect him for that. Anyway, he finished his little talk and then they'd play some more. And then the, at the end of the night, he would, okay, guys, time to go home. And then he would say goodbye to each one of those, one of those kids. So what to tell John? He asked me, show me the father. I said, what? Look at Father Mancini. Don't you see God in him? Right there. You're blind. Looks like the guy with his dog following the car was blind to his, how close he was. Hmm? I ask myself and ask you, when people see us, do they see God? Hmm? Can they see God in us? Now, I know we all have our, you know, we all could be cranky, impatient, and irritable. None of us are perfect. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to let, give God permission to let his grace shine through. And during this time, we, we see it. I'm always most grateful and appreciative of those who continue to work in our, in our soup kitchen, our pantry, you know? I know now things are probably calming down with the threat of the virus, it seems to be anyway. We, when we first started, fear that we had the anxiety. And those people came. Don't think people don't notice that, recognize that that they stayed open to serve them. Despite our defects, despite our faults, right? We have it. And they see God in us. And so I actually reflect on that. Hmm? I actually reflect on that. We pray that, um, Lord, uh, may they see less of me and more of you. And when they see me, may they see you, Jesus. And most importantly, Lord, may we be a blessing to others. For if they ask, show us the Father, show us God, we can confidently say, well, you want to see God? Just go to St. Teresa. Those are God's people working, loving you. God bless you. As we stand together, as we turn now to a loving, gracious Father, ask me to hear these are prayers. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop John, that they, by their actions, show us the way to the Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask your special blessing upon those who are still serving us, medical profession, first responders, and those, those daily needs that we have, that you keep them safe in your loving grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, I pray especially those who uh, work at our social services, soup kitchen, even the thrift store. Lord, watch over them and bless all our guests who come to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Hear our prayer. Lord, we uh, pray for, for our president, President Trump, all government leaders and all world leaders, put aside their own agenda, their own ego, and simply work to bring a healing to a hurting world. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. We pray for all our benefactors who have been so generous to us that allow us to continue serving others. Bless them for their generosity. And may you hear their prayers as well. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the wonderful people of St. Teresa. Lord, bless us that we may always be signs of your love to others. We pray to the Lord. Let's pause a few moments, speak to God from our hearts, those are the needs that we may have. This is May, hold on, Sunday, May 10th, right? Yeah. And we want to pray in a special way for Anna C. Gonzalez, for whom we have a special remembrance at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Loving Father, hear these are prayers. Some we said aloud, some known to you own. Grant that we pray now in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord, who lives with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
I want to thank all those who responded again with your contributions through mail, dropping them off, and many of those who have now decided to go give online or through their bank. Through their bank, I thank you so much. So we may continue to do the Lord's work, and you may receive the Lord's blessing. Thank you so much. We well, forgot one thing: is we forgot our chance, and opportunity to re recite our baptism promises. So I ask you: Do you reject Satan and all his works? all his lies. And do you believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in his only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, died, rose from the dead, and sits at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? This is our faith that God has so blessed us with, and may we be proudly and boldly share this faith with others, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go oh, backwards, that's okay. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, of your goodness, we receive from you the bread we offer, which earth has given you, and hands have made it to become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, of your goodness, we receive from you the wine we offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, and become our spiritual drink forever. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. <laughs> o God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we may have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. The risen Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is surely right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to Lord you that more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our causes before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> Heaven and earth, our fellow did love me. It is he who comes in the name, the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the f and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. 
you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which would be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Resurrection. Have set, set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death. You will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, nourished by the body and blood of your Son, filled with his Holy Spirit, become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, a spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Therese, Mother Teresa, Don Bosco, and all your saints, on whose constant intercession your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, so a pope, John our bishop, the order bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and mercy, Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you. At their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil grace you grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Let us offer each other now a sign of that peace, peace and blessings, and again, blessed Mother's Day. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
So as we pray now during this communion time, and though you cannot receive, again, invite the Lord Jesus into your heart and ask that he may use you, that you may be a blessing to others, and despite our failings and shortcomings, they may still see the Father's love in us. O Lord Jesus, may that be so. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from formal ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Again, we want to thank RJ and Liz for great music. Thank you for providing that for our liturgy. We want to thank Mr. Pick. You did excellent reading. Not one time did you stumble. I was very impressed. We want to thank Loretta for our sacristan, get things that were prepared for us. Ms. Marshall for helping your supervisor capacity. We want to thank Dad for keeping our church grounds look attractive and pleasing, especially when people arrive. And a special thanks, of course, to Greg from Fixit Tech right here in Bellevue, serving all your technology needs. Especially now this Mother's Day weekend, maybe I'd like to get your mom something you're afraid that they're intimidated by in technology, or maybe yourself intimidated by technology. Work with them, they'll work with you, and they keep things very, very simple. In fact, they told me um, if you shop there with the next 10 days, mention St. Teresa, they will give you, they will charge you a 10% increase on your items. Right? No, no, no. Anyway, so thanks so much for doing a great job. The Lord be with you. May mighty God bless you all and always. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our message is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Spirit of God, alleluia, alleluia.